Welcome to another edition of my podcast. Now, in the last podcast episode, I talked to you about the five types of salespeople. And I told you how the best salespeople in the world were those who focused on funnel-based selling, meaning they're tracking their activity at every step of the sales process. And at the end of the day, the week, the month, the year, they can give you numbers in terms of how many people they were talking to, what kind of activity they had. And most importantly, the most important activity, of course, is how much they made in sales. But what you find is that the people who are only focused on results are actually not as good in terms of the end result as those who focus on every step of the funnel. And this is something you see because I've talked to enough salespeople and I've hired enough salespeople and had them working for me. At this point, I probably have 20 different salespeople in various companies working for me. And I see what works and what doesn't work. And at one point, I managed a team of over 150 salespeople across the entire United States. And let me tell you, These were the facts that made the difference between the best salespeople and unfortunately those who didn't quite succeed. But what I want to talk to you about today is something totally unique that I don't usually talk about. In fact, I have a board of directors group. These are a group of business people that I talk to and I've taught them about the sales funnel, but none of them have heard this particular concept, which is a concept of simplifying your sales funnel and taking your sales funnel down to just four steps. Now, if you're a member of my board of directors and you've been trained by me on sales funnels, You're going to hear this and you're going to go, Armand, why didn't you tell me this before? Because I've been struggling with this stuff for so long. And now you're finally telling me we can break it down into four simple steps. Yes, I'm sorry to break it to you members. But yes, we can break it down into four simple steps. Now, in certain businesses, you may want to have more. But if you go with just these simple four steps, you can have an incredibly effective sales funnel that will get the results that you want. And it makes it a heck of a lot easier to track. So first, let me tell you what a sales funnel is. For those of you who don't know, what a sales funnel is, is simply saying, when you look at a funnel, the bottom of a funnel is small and the top of the funnel is big. And so all a sales funnel tells you is that, look, it's not a pipe. It's not that you have a certain number of people come in and that same number of people go out the other end. What you have is you get a bunch of people who are out there who could potentially be your clients. And then at the end of the day, only a certain number of them end up being your client, right? In any business, you can see this. In say, for example, if you're going out there doing outside sales, well, you might need to knock on a hundred doors and at the end of the day, you might get two sales. So that would mean you started with a hundred people at the top of your funnel and you ended up with two in the bottom. But what a sales funnel does is it tells you that there are steps along the way that you can be tracking. And by tracking those different aspects of your sales process, what it allows you to do is find out where your opportunities for improvement are and find out what aspects of your sales process are working and what is not working. So Let's get right into it and talk about this in the most simplified manner that we possibly can by taking your sales funnel, breaking it down into four simple steps. Step one is prospecting. What that means is that the people at the top of your sales funnel, we're going to call them prospects. What is a prospect? Well, a prospect you can define as someone you get in front of. Now, depending if you're doing outside sales, inside sales, you're in retail or what you're in, it doesn't really matter. In a retail store, your prospects would be everybody who walks in the door. In outside selling, your prospects would be the people in a specific area. Let's say you go door-to-door selling solar panels. Well, the number of homes in a particular complex that you knock on, right, those would be your prospects. When you're doing inside sales and you're making calls going out, well, then the number of calls you make, right, or the people you get on the phone, those might be your prospects. But the bottom line is in any business, you have a certain number of people you get in front of. Now, today, With marketing and social media marketing, especially, you know, Facebook gives you actual data on how many people are watching your videos, right? So that kind of thing is something you can track very easily online these days because you're seeing how many prospects you have. And on your website, using analytics tools, you can actually see how many people are visiting your website. Those are your prospects. So what you want to do is you want to be clear on how many people are you actually getting into the top of your sales funnel. Now, in the last episode, We talked about the different types of salespeople and we talked about the top of the funnel and we said the people who only focus on the top of the funnel are what? Yes, they're prayer-based sellers because they talk to as many people as possible praying that those will turn into sales. And while that's not the worst kind of selling, it's better than actually a couple other ones. It's definitely not the best. So once you've prospected, what's the next step? Well, from prospecting, you get to what I call a qualified lead. A qualified lead is someone who you've prospected to, and you have identified as someone who could potentially utilize your products or services. And at this point, in order to make this kind of combined step, I'm going to also say that they have to know who you are, 
and sort of have access to your information, meaning your name and your phone number, website address, email address, whatever it is that their method of contact is with you. So now you've taken all these prospects and you've identified them as a qualified lead, meaning if you're going door to door selling solar panels, as the example was, you've knocked on someone's door, they've answered the door, they're standing in front of you, and you've asked them, do you have solar panels on your home? And they say no. And you say, have you ever thought about the fact that installing solar panels might save you money and make you more environmentally friendly, and they don't shut the door in your face? At this point, you might possibly have a qualified lead on your hands. Do you see the difference how we took someone from a prospect to a qualified lead? All it is is going from sort of having a big, huge wide net to saying, okay, how many of these people can I actually talk to? So if you're in retail, right, and someone walks into your retail store, let's say, again, I'll give you the Nordstrom Shoes example. If you're in the Nordstrom Shoes department and somebody walks in, right, they're a prospect. But if they get to your department and they walk in and they start looking at shoes, hey, that might be a qualified lead. Whereas if they turn and go to the bathing suit section, that may not necessarily be a qualified lead for you. Now, what you see is the best salespeople in the world figure out how to make that bathing suit person a qualified lead for the shoe department. But how you sell is a completely different story. Today, I want to talk to you about the steps of the sale. So we've gone from prospecting and having prospects to now having qualified leads, which again, is that person who's willing to at least hear you out and not shut the door on your face, right? That's a qualified lead. Now, what's the next step? What do you do with your qualified leads? You push them one more step down the sales funnel, and now I call this the proposal step, right? This is the step where the handoff happens, where you actually put a decision in front of the person. You give them something where they can now make a decision about whether they want to do business with you or not. This is the third step of the four-step sales funnel. So you've prospected. Again, for the solar example, you've knocked on their door. They've answered the door. They didn't shut the door in your face. They don't already have solar panels up on their house. And now you talk to them about it. You let them know about your products or service. You give them ideas of how this is going to save them money. You've given them all this information. And now you say, look, here's what we can do for you. For you, we can install this many solar panels. It's going to take this much time and it's going to cost you this much money. So the proposal is where you give them all the information they need to make a decision. Once you've done that, you're in the proposal stage, meaning the ball is now on the potential client's court, right? Now, of course, the best salespeople in the world don't stop at that. They realize that even though the ball is on the potential customer's court, they still need to work their butt off to make that sale happen. But you've now gone to the third step of selling. So let's review. You've got prospects and you turn your prospects into qualified leads. You've got qualified leads. You then put a proposal in front of them. And finally, the fourth step is the close. You close them, you make the sale, you get money in the bank, and you're done. That's what the four steps of the sales process are. Now, of course, the best salespeople in the world, they are not done at step number four. They have other steps after this because the way that they do it is they want to get repeat business, they want to get referral business, and all of that other stuff. But in the simplest way, what I've done for you here, and again, for my board of directors members who've heard me talking about this so many times, I'm telling you their head's spinning right now going, my goodness, I had nine steps in my sales funnel. Thank you, Armand, for simplifying it to four. Well, if you have nine steps and it's working for you, stick with it. But if you've tried to track your sales funnel and you struggled because you felt like, my goodness, there's just too much to track, I've now simplified it into four simple steps. So let me take this now and give you a couple different industry examples. One example would be real estate. Let's say you're in the business of selling houses, right? What you're going to need to do is do prospecting. The best way to do prospecting is either do marketing online or make cold calls. So let's say you're making cold calls. When you cold call, let's say 100 people, those are your prospects. Now, a qualified lead would be someone who says, for example, yes, you know, I would consider selling my house right now. I understand that inventory is low and maybe this is a good time for me to sell. Sure, I'd be happy to talk to you about it. You've now got a qualified lead. Now, you take that person, you meet with them in person as most real estate agents do to get a listing and you sit with them, you go through the stuff with them at their kitchen table or whatever and you put a proposal in front of them. Hey, look, this is what it's going to take for me to list your house. You've gone to step three. And finally, when they say yes, they sign the dotted line, they list the home with you. That, my friends, is when you have a close, right? You can see this in just about every single industry, in every place that you go, there are these four steps. And again, there can be a lot of other steps in between these, but the best salespeople in the world, when you ask them, how did your day go? As you learned in the last episode, they give you numbers about the funnel. So for example, the best salespeople might say, you know, today I made a hundred cold calls. Uh, It was really good because I got 10 qualified leads. Also, um, in the evening, I went out and made three presentations 
And man, I'm so excited because this week I've already made two sales. See, they're telling you the different parts of the sales funnel. So get out there, take this sales funnel concept, put it to use out there every day. And if you're in business and you think you're not a salesperson, let me tell you, anybody who loves a product or service or anyone who cares about their client is going to be about selling because how else are you going to let the world take advantage of the incredible things that you have? For me, this podcast is an amazing thing. But look, if we weren't out there selling this podcast, even though it's free and people can download it for free and do whatever they want with it, we still have to get out there and sell it. Otherwise, no one's going to know about it. So whatever your product or service is, get out there, recognize just how important it is for you to sell and understand that if you create a structured sales funnel system using the simple four-step sales funnel, you are going to be able to massively increase your sales. And the important things with your sales funnel is this, once you set it up, you've got to track the numbers. So at any point, I got to be able to tell you how many people are in the proposal stage, right? And you should be able to give me an answer. I should be able to tell you, hey, how many qualified leads did you get this week? And you should be able to answer that. How many people did you prospect to this week? You should be able to answer that. And of course, how much business did you close? You better be able to answer that. But if you can answer these four steps, prospecting, qualified leads, proposal, and close, I guarantee you, you're ahead of 98% of the salespeople I've met and I've managed in my life. Hey guys, look, get out there. I say guys, of course, guys and gals, everybody listening to this podcast, get out there and kick some butt with your business. I want to see you reach levels in life that you've never imagined. Get out there and take the awesome things that you've done, the products and services that you've created, and let's offer them to the world to make this world a better place. I love you all, and as always, in business, in life, in relationships, and in everything else that you do, always remember to lead with your heart.